Toronto-grown Glenn Lewis found early success in his hometown and eventually south of the border as well. His debut album made everyone sit up and take notice of this brand new artist who had been showered with praise from a variety of artists, including Jill Scott, Music Soul Child, and India Ari. However, it would be more than a decade before his follow-up album released, leaving his fans wondering if they would ever hear from him again. Let's find out whatever happened to Canadian neo-soul singer-songwriter Glenn Lewis. Glennon Ricketts Jr., professionally known as Glenn Lewis, was born March 13, 1975, the only child to a Trinidadian mother and Jamaican father. He began to focus on music as his future career in his teens. Hailed as a young Stevie Wonder, he wrote his first song at the age of 14, of course, for a girl he had a crush on. After high school, he began recording demos and performing at nightclubs, eventually building a reputation in Toronto. It was in his blood since both of his parents were singers. His father, who Glenn is named after, was the lead singer of Canadian band Crack of Dawn that formed in the mid-70s. They had the distinction of being the first black Canadian band to sign with a major record label. Glenn's parents were always supportive of his pursuit of a career in music. His mother more so since Glenn had a very sporadic relationship with his, quote, Rolling Stone father. He spoke candidly to TheBeeShine.com in 2013 about watching what the failure of his father's career did to him and how it influenced his approach to his own career, saying, I saw the disappointment to what he thought the path for his career should have been and how it affected him. He really got down. He just sort of shut himself off and kind of shut people out. He had been working so hard and he felt like people were taking advantage of him. I just kind of realized that you really got to hone in on the business and learn about the business. Even with this knowledge in his back pocket, Glenn would still not be able to escape having similar experiences as his father in his own career. He released a couple of singles back to back in 97 and 98 in Canada, both of which earned him a Juno Award nomination. His next release would secure him a lot more than an award. It would also get him the attention of American record label Epic Records, and shortly after that, his first record deal. World Outside My Window, Glenn's debut album, dropped on March 19, 2002. The album was recorded in Toronto and Philadelphia, a place Glenn has adopted as his second home, with producers Andre Harris and Vidal Davis. The first single, Don't You Forget It, released the year before, peaked at number 10 on the Billboard Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart, and finally won him his first Juno for Best R&B Soul Recording. And don't you forget it, don't, don't you forget, forget your way The second single, It's Not Fair, was released one month later, but it barely cracked the charts. 2002 was also the year that he made his acting debut in the film Made in Manhattan, starring Jennifer Lopez and Ralph Fiennes. The song Fall Again that he performed in the movie also appeared on the soundtrack. Just one year later, Glenn was back for more when he released a single of the same name in September 2003. Back for More also featured Canadian rapper Cardinal Official. It was originally the first single from his unreleased album, also of the same name. Then, Glenn took a very long, involuntary hiatus. The music business became more about business than music, and he was caught in the middle. The Back For More album ended up being one of three or four that he recorded over the next decade that would never see the light of day. He never stopped creating, although at times he wanted to. In a 2013 interview with online magazine blogcritics.com, he spoke about what really happened, saying, Literally, when I debuted was the beginning of the shift in the music game. Napster was coming to the surface. That started to undermine the business. By the time the record labels figured out what was happening, it was too late. It was already spiraling out of control. People were reactive as opposed to proactive. A lot of the business people that were instrumental in my first project and supportive of me as an artist had either been let go or had to leave. By the time it came around to do the second project, 
it was a whole different regime. When new people come in, they all have their vision of what they think is going to establish them and make them a success. Often people don't want to pick up what somebody else was working on because their name is already attached to it. The artist ends up getting lost in the shuffle. So Sony and I amicably parted ways. It took a while for me to come back because the industry had gone through so many changes. Everybody was so scared because they remembered me as this, quote, the Neo Soul guy, and Neo Soul wasn't happening anymore, regardless of me being a respected artist who was completely capable. More than a decade after his debut, his second album titled Moment of Truth was finally released in October 2013. Only one single was released from the album called Can't Say Love. He did reveal later a major disappointment about the making of the album. Due to the process being a very collaborative effort, he felt he didn't get to fully express the space he was in creatively and compromised in areas that he shouldn't have. By the time 2016 rolled around, Glenn was in a very different headspace regarding his career. He became emotionally exhausted and felt he needed to get back to basics. He initially contemplated the idea of getting into the management side of the industry, but that idea quickly fell by the wayside when he got a call from DJ Jazzy Jeff. He convinced Glenn to attend a retreat he had coming up. In the past, the retreat was exclusive to only DJs and producers, but this year, he was inviting artists and songwriters as well. Glenn decided to go, and it ended up turning into the best creative experience of his life. Based off of the retreat success, Jeff was inspired to take it to another level and invite everyone to do something unprecedented. Record a complete album in just seven days. The following year, that album, called Chasing Goosebumps, with the playlist featuring Glenn Lewis, was released. The process of putting that album together was also the catalyst in turning Glenn's outlook on the music industry around. The now husband and father went through a dark period of not wanting to watch award shows, listen to music, or even sing for a long while. However, as a result of all his experiences over the years, he now has a new acceptance and appreciation for the lessons learned. On February 12, 2019, Glenn posted a photo of himself in a recording studio on Instagram with the caption, Studio Vibes. I'm coming with something new. Soon. As of the making of this video, no singles or album has been released, but judging by the amount of comments on the post, he's got a lot of fans that can't wait to see what he comes out with next. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video and subscribe for more amazing content. See you next time.